Dear Diplomatische Akademie Wien, thank you so much for inviting me to speak. I'm delighted and honored to be here with you today, particularly when addressing one of the most important topics of all times. It is superfluous to say that women's equality rights and human rights are synonymous and far too often are treated as two separate issues. You probably know that around 70% of the world's poor are women. In my profession as an international soloist and a classical singer, I have the great privilege to have probably never been the victim of gender-based inequality. Yet in my field, as in most, we encounter some scary facts. I must say that as I was doing research preparing for this talk, I was shocked to see the situation in the majority of the world's leading orchestras. In the Vienna Philharmonic, currently around 10% of the players are women. In Berlin Philharmonic, around 15. The situation in most of the other European countries, such as France or Italy, is not much different. And where women do get employed, well, let us have a look at how frighteningly few of them make it up to the position of a leader or a section leader, which is an equivalent of a managing or directorial post in a company. We see the clear and sad correlation between gender and prestige. So the smaller and less well-paid the orchestra, the more women we tend to find in it in leading positions. In art, as in every other business, there seems to be an unbroken general rule with few exceptions. I'd like to quote a well-known German musicologist, Christian Ahrens, who recently said, wo Geld ist, sind die Männer, which means where the money is, that's where men are. But in my opinion, a more accurate translation would be, women are not where the money is. So many of them keep steering away from the most prestigious and well-paid positions. Why? Now, this can be hard for most of us to understand. I, for instance, have been privileged to have been brought up by a single mother and well-known violinist with an unshakable belief in herself and sense of equality. I'm also very fortunate to be surrounded by many wonderful men the vast majority of men I know, in fact, who are truly supportive of equality, more than prepared to take their part in this change, and who, like me, cannot comprehend why, at this point in history, we're still confronted with what is an intolerable situation. And this brings me to the point which, in my opinion, is not being discussed often enough. Women themselves frequently sabotage their own opportunities for equality, subconsciously or maybe even consciously. Much too often are they acting out of some cliche-based expectations of others and maybe even of themselves. We, women in the developed parts of the world, are fortunate enough to be able to choose the professions we want and become doctors, lawyers, high-ranking officials and obtain leading positions in companies. We're free to choose what to do with our lives and more importantly, what not to do. For example, there is no need to succumb to the subtle pressure of society to have children when we may not really want to. Or, and this is an example I bring up frequently, give up our surname when entering a marriage. Now, what is the deep reason for doing so? Why are women prepared to relinquish their name, their identity? I pose this question frequently, and in most cases, the responses of those women have been defensive and almost aggressive. It is as if they were their own worst enemies, as if they just couldn't part with the history of sacrifice. They make decisions against their own career development in order to stay home with children and obviously 
decades later, they're much more likely to end up disadvantaged financially and emotionally. Should I live to be an old woman, one of my greatest dreams would be to see the word feminism become unnecessary. To see young women go to the top without doubts and unnecessary compromises, just as their male counterparts do. And to see men happier as well. Finally, being able to profit from the many benefits of equality, like having time to be there fully for their children and not being pressured to prove themselves in a way that those old fashioned cliches of the past would have expected of them. In 1916, the New York writer Floyd Dell wrote, feminism will make it possible for the first time for men to be free. 105 years later, I appeal to women, do not conform to traditional antiquated beliefs anymore. Do not give up your name, your career, or your dreams. And this is the only way all of us, women and men, can finally achieve freedom. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christina.